Okay, so let's look at some more examples of these transformations. And, and there'll be some review transformations, but then there also is going to be uh, transformations uh, that we just talked about in the last video with absolute values. So, um, you know, the, the graph here is some function that has some key points here. And it's asking us to take, oh, I see a typo already. It says, let g of x be this graph, and these are all transformations in terms of f. Uh, I don't know if yours says that. I, I sometimes update things and save things, and maybe I forgot to do that. So um, let's make you know, let's let's make <laughs> make it match up. So let's call this like f of x, since all of them are transformations. So I apologize for that. And then let's go ahead and get rid of oops um, uh, this from the last example. Okay, so it says graph the function f of x plus two. Well, remember when your plus two is modified outside the function. That's an effect on the y values. In other words, this entire graph we could think about is being whatever, you know, here's our graph, right? So whatever the shape is, like that shape then is getting pushed up two units. So so that's what the image would be. Um, and again, like as long as I have that <laughs> saved, that actually is really nice on the smart board. Um, this transformation here of f of x minus 3, when it's inside the function as an x like that, remember, that modification is actually its opposite, if you will. So that's actually moving to the right 3. So then it would look something like that one. So what I want to do is kind of capture that and kind of keep track of these four key points. So for this first transformation, um, uh, you know, uh, let's see, let's go maybe, well, yeah, I guess black to get the xy axis. Um, so for that first transformation, I'm just shifting it up two units. So that means that um, that negative two, at, you know, like at negative two, it bounces up to zero, and then zero bounces up to two. So then it would look something like um, this, like this, and then it goes higher like that. Okay, so so there's almost like the pseudo x axis that got shifted up two units, right? Everything's getting pushed up two. So this would be three comma two. This would be negative two comma zero. This would be negative three comma two. And I think this was um, one comma five. It is now one comma seven. Okay, so, and, you know, something on a quiz, I'd expect you to label those points as well. So it kind of shows me that you know what's happening. Okay, and then, you know, if we go ahead and graph the second one here, we said that's a transformation to the right, three units. So then I'm kind of trying to get this image of that of this red graph that I had um, that I, you know, I just kind of sampled. So then this goes higher. So their y values aren't changing, but their x values aren't. So then instead of going to three, zero, it's actually going to go to six, zero. And instead of one, five, it'll be at, four, five, because the x value moved to the right. So instead of zero, zero, this is three, zero. Um, this right here would be um, one, negative two. And then this one right here would be zero, zero. Because again, that x minus three, uh, you know, this x minus three here is only affecting the x components. So all the x components slide to the right by three units. Okay, excellent. Now, um, let's see what else is on this page. Oh, excellent. I love part C and part D because that's exactly what we just talked about. So remember, if your transformation is outside, the, like absolute value is outside f of x, that's affecting the y variables. And so remember, we're only going to behave with y, positive y uh, values. So Y values that are already positive, nothing happens. Y values that are negative will get reflect up to their positive counterparts. So as I look at the original function, everything to the right here, um, like everything over here, is already positive above the x-axis. So that's great. This part here would then just flip up and be like a smaller hip, uh, like you know, hill. Um, but all like all of these negatives become positive. So that graph looks something like this. Um, dun, 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 dun. There it is. Sorry. Um, so the right side will not change, but the left side will. Thin marker there. So this side is still the same, but this side is just a 
reflected version. So this is still negative three, zero, because that y valued zero, so there's no change. This one's negative two, positive two, make that y value positive. This is still zero, zero. This is still one, five. And then this is still three, zero. So again, only the things that were below get reflected above. So it's not a trans it's not a reflection over the x-axis, because if it were, then this would have been right graphed below. Okay, so next, um, when it's on the inside, remember the behavior of the right does not change. So this, oops, sorry. So the behavior of the right does not change. So that's gonna stay the same on my graph. So I can at least get that down. Um, oops, sorry, not that, but that, there we go. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, fill that in. It says zero, um, sorry, three, zero. And then this is still one, five. And this is still zero, zero. Now, um, so, like when people first start doing this, uh, students might try to do this. They might try to take this image, which was here, and just make it on the x-axis. They might just reflect it like that. And, and you know, that, that doesn't work because, uh, one, you no longer have a function, and this transformation of a function should generate a function. Uh, but two, you're not behaving like the x values are. You can't change the fact that your graph is to the left of the, um, uh, of the y-axis, right? So, so negative x's still live over here. Like this is where, they, I mean, this is anything on this side, that's where the negative x's live. You just have to make sure their behavior is mirroring the right side. So um, what I want to do then is, t you know, you, you again, you have to be like, um, I'm going to use the highlighter. You have to, um, you know, you still have to be on this side of the y-axis. That's where the negative x's live. They're just going to behave like their, y, their positive counterparts. In other words, you're going to get this. Notice that this behavior, all of these y values, and again, when I say behavior, think y values, all of these y values now mirror the y values that are over here. But yet geographically, they're still negative x's. So this would still be negative 3, 0. Now this up here no longer is a negative 2. It's going to have to be a negative 1 if it's the peak because negative 1 will behave like positive 1. They both give the, the, the outcome of a 5. Okay, so um, I hope that sort of makes sense. Uh, again, I'll pause the video, try some more examples, and then follow along on the next video or do them on your own and check your solutions at the end of the video. Whatever kind of makes sense to you to kind of make sure we are okay with these two newer transformations. And then we start doing variations of those transformations as well.